<laughs> what's up guys uh, I said I'd be filming these bits so here we are we are just on the way to the bus station and about to head to Berlin look I am loaded up with stuff here where's Olivia loaded up there <laughs> yeah we've got a lot of stuff between us um, got to carry this box the whole way to send off Olivia's laptop in the morning anyway I'm rambling I'm gonna go get to the bus and head to Berlin come on I love your fashion choices right now. <laughs> cool, well, quick 10 minute tram and we're here at the bus terminal and we're ready. I've actually been really impressed by the trams. We can get everywhere around Prague really quickly and that was the same here. We have got a Flix bus. I don't know if any of you guys have used it before. Um, but they're really good, they go all over Europe and it was cheap. I think tonight from here to Berlin was 14 euros each. So relatively cheap way to get across Europe. We only have about 10 minutes, so we need to go to the bus now. There we go, Berlin. Okay, easy as that. Four hours bus journey, next stop, Berlin. Berlin and we got here late last night and we just come out straight away this morning to get the traditional Berlin snack curry vest I've been here before I came here like five years ago and I tried this and loved it so still good still good it's basically <laughs> curry sauce on a sausage you want to try okay Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I know, I like the sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get this one. The first stop for today is the Berlin Wall Memorial, which, for those of you that don't know, the Berlin Wall separated East and West Germany um, from 1961, I think, through till 1989. It divided the country straight down the middle, and you can still see the memorial here today. So this is the memorial here where the wall used to stand. Now this here is to symbolize that you can just step across now. One thing that's pretty bizarre is that up until 1961, they had freedom of movement between East and West. So there, were, there was no restricted borders. You could have friends over here, go hang out or whatever. And then suddenly on 1961, the whole border was closed and people were fleeing to escape East Germany to get into West, but basically that was illegal. Everything was cut off. And you could still see into the other side. If you were on one of the top floors of the apartments, you could literally see someone every day for 30 years, even have a friend the other side of the wall that you could never talk to or really see properly without getting across the border. I was just saying to Olivia, I think that's kind of crazy to imagine, but it's also still happening some places. Like I went to South Korea last year and went to the DMZ and that's a similar situation there with South and North Korea that there are families that were split up 50 years ago that are some are on the North Korean side, some are on the South Korean side and if they're ever unified, who knows, um, it'll be a similar situation to this I guess. You had East and West Germany and now there's Germany as a whole. If that could ever happen in Korea, who knows, but just a thought that there's kind of a parallel between what happened here and what's happening there right now. This is an original part of the Berlin Wall, or so I believe. And you can sort of see how small it is, really, in my eyes. Um, it's only there, it's like, I don't know, eight foot, and then the other side of there is another country. Just kind of mad to think about when you were 
living here and you knew just literally a stone's throw away was the other side of Germany. There's also another more famous, maybe, part of the Berlin Wall that we're going to head to now. So this is now the east side gallery and I have to shout a bit because it's right next to a main road this is a section of the wall that is now an open-air gallery and it's become an international symbol for freedom the whole wall is about freedom of expression so all the way along here for 1300 meters lots of different artists have painted the wall in their own way and you can just walk along it now and see all of the different art and graffiti all the way down this road what do you think? Um, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it's 1,300 meters. It's the largest open air gallery in the world. Oh. And it's done by 30 different artists in 1990. And then since then, all the graffiti has been put on it. Oh, that's cool. Facts. Didn't know that. That's it. More walk. This is the end. We made it to the end of the gallery. Just over a kilometre of art along the wall. Very interesting to see and glad we came and saw it. Uh, we got a bit of a rushed itinerary because we're only here for two days. So we're off to the next place. Checkpoint Charlie, KFC, McDonald's. Globalization at its best. We're now at Checkpoint Charlie, which is the best known border crossing between East and West Germany at the time. And I don't know if you can see, but there's the checkpoint, there's McDonald's, here's KFC. I think that's how you know this was the American side. And we're now walking through the Holocaust Memorial, the memorial to uh, the murdered Jews throughout Europe. Yeah, cool day in Berlin, seeing the sights. We just tried to pack in as much as possible and I hope you enjoyed the little tour of our experience of the city. Um, I actually forgot to do the outro and it's 10 at night now and me and Olivia are about to go out for some drinks and see Berlin at night. Tomorrow night we're heading off to Copenhagen. I'm not sure if I'm going to do another video tomorrow or not. Um, so you'll either see me on the way to Copenhagen or back here in Berlin. But for now, I'll just say again, thank you for watching. And this is my life.